Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Over here we see my pantry build, which hopefully you've seen that video by now. But anyways, this is my kitchen. As you can see, the cabinets are painted white, but they didn't always used to be white. Check this out. <coughs> Ew, gross. Pink cabinets, I know, right? Anyways, we redid this kitchen about eight years ago. I painted all these cabinets and it looks good from far. But one thing I did when I redid all these cabinet doors is I changed the 90 degree hard corner edge and I gave everything this profile using one of my fancy router bits. Now, as you can see up close, this is pretty fuzzy and awful because these are actually particle board doors. Now, I can't afford to redo all these doors and I don't have that kind of time since, you know, the price of wood is insane and I've got a newborn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to fix all 30 some out of these doors, give them a new profile and fill it in with some spackle and repaint everything. And hopefully it makes a world of difference and we can save a bit of money too. Let's get to it. The first step was to take the doors and drawer fronts off. This was pretty straightforward, but a key thing to remember is to mark every piece with some kind of indication of where it goes to avoid any headaches when putting everything back. In my case, I numbered the upper and lower cabinets starting at one and going up from left to right. I used painter's tape and a sharpie for the doors, but for the drawers, I simply wrote top, middle, bottom, left or right on the back of each, as this gets covered up anyways when reinstalled. After that, I can begin work on making a drying rack for all the doors and drawer fronts. At the table saw, I cut up a bunch of scraps into strips and some thicker strips for the bottom feet. I set up a stop block at the miter saw and cut everything to the same length. I then cut a little bit off the 2x4s as these make up the main upright supports for the rack. I clamped the two boards together and began making marks every 6 inches on both boards starting at what will be the top. I then used my speed square to make the marks more visible. I then lined up the support arms to be able to mark multiple at a time. The mark centers the arms on the 2x4 so the rack size is doubled front and back. I start by attaching the base by adding glue and keeping things square with my speed square and adding some me nails. Then support arms are all attached with glue and two nails while holding the speed square against the 2x4 and eyeballing my markings so everything is centered. Once all are installed I come back to drill for pilot holes and drive in one screw to the center of each arm to act as insurance as well as adding clamping pressure as the glue dries. At the miter saw I cut some 2x4 scraps on a 45 to gusset the base. I first pencil outline the gussets so I know where to put glue, then from the back drive some 1.5 inch screws. I then toenail a 3 inch screw into the 2x4 upright. This entire process is duplicated and I can begin to attach them. I chose to take some 3 quarter inch plywood scraps, cut to the same width and drive in 4 screws at the top and bottom of the rack to make sure nothing moves. These two boards make the structure super rigid and are easily removed for storage later. So I've got all the doors and fronts removed and the first thing I'm going to do is use my random orbit sander with 120 grit sandpaper and just do a quick light pass on all the fronts. This is going to knock down all the little high spots and bumps and fuzzies because I never really sanded these originally when I painted them. So they're kind of uneven and I want them super smooth as the next step is going to be over at the router table and putting that new rounded profile around all the edges. And you want this to be super smooth because any bumps and stuff is going to translate directly into the edge when it goes up against the bit. So I'll put my herring protection on, I'll do a quick sanding and meet you over at the router table. I've got everything with the light sanding. I even did all the edges just to make sure that there weren't any bumps as I'm going across this bearing. And you see I've got here set this, I don't know if it's called a cove bit or a reverse roundover bit, but it's about half inch radius and this is going to completely eliminate our fuzzy, awful decorative edging here. Let's get to it. So that router bit actually left a really smooth finish, but I know from experience just getting a little bit of paint onto this bare particle board is going to leave a really rough surface. So the next step is to just take some drywall spackle and rub it into all the seams, all the joints here, and that's going to really even it out. All it's going to need after this is a really light sanding, and then it's going to have a perfect finish after a couple coats of paint. Now you definitely wouldn't be able to do this this easily with as complicated as a profile that was on here before. So this rounded profile or even a chamfer is definitely the way you want to go if you're going to try to do something like this. Thank you. 
The first coat of paint was applied to the backs and was left to dry for two days before beginning on the fronts. This was because I wanted to make absolute sure the paint was cured and didn't want to risk the backs having get stuck to the drying rack as the fronts dried later. The paint I used is standard Home Depot satin finish Alkyde paint. I had the store color match my cabinets since the CIL branded melamine paint I used before was discontinued and I didn't want to paint the stuff inside the house if I didn't have to. Okay, so the first coat is dry. Now I'm going to go ahead, give everything a light sanding with some 240 grit and all these grooves and the same thing on the outside and blow off the dust real quick and we're ready to spray on our second coat. In my experience, when I tried using a pneumatic paint gun, it never worked great. As a result, you can see I'm using a corded HVLP Wagner spray gun. This thing works amazing and the best part, it requires no thinning. As thick as that paint was, the gun didn't care and did an amazing job. When I originally painted the cabinets years ago, I used a roller and a brush. Man, did that suck. I would 100% recommend getting one of these HVLP guns as they aren't very expensive and can be used for so many things, including spraying polyurethane on wooden projects. As we watch me put the kitchen back together, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button and head over to DIYbuilds.ca where you can download free plans for any of my projects, including my new pantry. The last thing to do is take apart the drying rack and store it for a future project. I nested the two pieces into each other and drove in two 3 inch screws to the top and bottom to keep them together. With that, this project is complete and I couldn't be happier with the results. Damn, I'm good.